Okay, I think we are live. Very uh, good evening or good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Phil Pendlebury here. Hope you're having a super mega large day. Any uh, viewers from the Middle East? Salam alaikum, mahaba. And also, of course, compliments of the season to everyone. Hope you're doing well. And uh, today we're going to have a look at a little bit of creative voice design in Nuendo 11. So the scenario is um, we've got a we've got a somebody who wants to do a demo of some different voices or you know voiceover work, voice acting, etc. And what I did is I thought I'll make it a little bit more interesting than just having the standard thing and the standard radio presenter voices. So I've written a little script. It's four minutes long, and uh, done some different voices. And I'm going to play you that, and then we'll show you how it was all put together. So let's switch over to Nuendo. I'll get my headphones on so I can hear everything. I hope you can hear me. Uh, oh, by the way, hello, Felipe, if you're uh, still there. Good to see you nice and early. Right, so here we are in Nuendo. Just quickly check that my camera's working. It's always a bit tricky with the, the live stream stuff. So you can see me. I'm here. I've now got headphones on. Let's get rid of the camera and uh, we'll take you through this. So I hope you've got headphones on. I'm streaming in 4K at the moment. I know, again, a lot of people say you shouldn't do that, but for me, it's the way my screen's set up and uh, it works quite well for me. So let's go for it. Have a quick listen to this. Um, I'm not a voice actor by trade, of course, um, but I just want to show you through this and show you how the Steinberg tools and Nuendo really helped uh, to put this all together. So here we go. Hello, can I help you? Hello. Do you mind if I have a look around your studio? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. OK. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. And now, the news. A statement has been released today by Sahib Anthony Didibinini Bibisa, Prime Minister of Smegville. Mr Didibinini Bibisa has warned all his loyal subjects that they should never, under any circumstances, type Google into Google, as this may break the internet. Oh, that was interesting. Here in Studio 2, we're recording an advert for a new movie which is coming out next year. In a world where no one cares about other drivers, Smegville Studios presents If You Indicate, I Will Cut You Off. Starring Tom Bruce as Jack Lemon, the man who drives a smart car but thinks he is driving a bus. And introducing Jason Platon as an angry driver in a large 4x4 with big, flashy, overly bright headlights. Sounds like a great movie. In Studio 3, we're recording a television advert. Thinking of purchasing a new mobile telephone? It's two for the price of three, all week at Care 5. Sale starts on Sunday morning. Come on down on Sunday night and sleep over in our specially designed tents to avoid the rush. Grab the apple you always wanted at Care 5. Offer applies from 9am until 9.01am. Items cannot be switched. No refunds or exchanges will be accepted. Um, OK, great. Let's have a quick look in Studio 4. What do you think you're doing? I'm trying to record a scientific show in here. It's taken me all week to get the whiskey bottles lined up correctly. And now you've gone and spoiled it all. Um, sorry about that. Let's move on to Studio 5. OK. Hi, Jeremy. I'm just showing this strange-looking gentleman around the studio. Can we come in? Yes, of course. I was just looking through some pictures of my new Porsche. Would you like to see them? Um, Here's my favourite. You can see it is in apple green and features a painting of my face on each door. I simply love it. Um, OK, thanks, Jeremy. Here's Studio 6. I'm not actually sure what's going on here today. This is a restricted area. Kill them all. Yes, sir. <laughs> He is very important to me, and I like his beard. 
Well, your reverence, that's really wonderful to hear. Really, really wonderful. I feel absolutely rhapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Thank you so much, your reverence. On second thoughts, kill him too. What? Blast him! Okay, I think we should leave that there. I had no idea they were in here. In fact, if you don't mind, I'm just going to have a quick word with Tracy. Just give me one minute. Hello, Tracy? Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed this little tour. Did you see anything that might interest you? Um, well, I, um, I just wanted to use the toilet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 all right. Okay, so that was the basic script and put into, uh, put into some kind of form. What, the point here was, what? Let's put the camera on. Yeah, so like I was trying to say earlier, rather than, rather than just, you know, reading a few demos of the voice, what I thought I would do is treat it a little bit like a, a short film or a, or a radio play, like you used to hear, you know. Um, of course, the, the thing here is the emphasis still has to be on the voice, so you don't want to take over uh, with too many effects and obviously things like when people are walking around you don't want them to be going off of mic or off of camera because you know you're trying to demo your voice. So let's go through it and I uh, hope you find this moder moderately interesting. Um, I had fun doing this and uh, let's let's go through it stage, stage by stage as it were. Right so I'm gonna kick off just with um, with my voice which is obviously under the name Phil here. Um, there's not really much to say about this except for, again, this is, I don't know how relevant this is to, you know, people that are, are doing, um, using Nuendo, but generally for making voice acting or voice over scripts and, and demos, you do want to try and get your own voice in, uh, if you can, rather than just doing loads of impressions of Scotsman like most people do, and, and actually like I have here. So yeah, there's mine. This is just mm, me. No problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. So you can see there that basically there's no treatment on that. It's just, um, let's bring, maybe we should zoom in. Yeah, there we go. We're zoomed in a little bit now. And there's a little bit of editing still to be done, really, on the voices. Um, if you see here, let's get that right into the correct position. Yeah, like that. So what I would do is probably go through this and clean up, and get rid of all these little incidental bits. If you stretch these out, you'll see there's quite a bit of background noise from various things. Um, I'm here in Dubai, so sometimes it does get a little bit warm, so the ACs have to come on and so on. Um, but you try to obviously keep them off when you're recording voices. So yeah, that's a bit, there's not really much to say about that. That's just my voice with a little mm, bit of no treatment. Problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going We've on got, here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. We've got a little bit of Butch Vig on uh, some of these. This is nothing that couldn't be done really without any of the with any of the um, Ste uh, Steinberg plugins, of course. Um, but I've got these set up, so that's the way they are. The interesting stuff will come in a minute. So what I did was I went through. I've got my script. So let's bring that into the middle. You're still zoomed in, so let's bring that in so we can see that. So I've done the script, script quite nicely. All the different characters have names. And what I did is I went through and pretty much recorded them one at a time, which as you can imagine, that's how it's normally done. So I recorded all the fill parts and laid that out as a single wave file, which is why you can see that they're all chopped up because they were all just done at once. So let's move on. 
what we've got to do now is the the what I call the minion although he's not actually a minion he's just some random character so have a listen to this hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio sounds a bit gormless um, I wonder just play that again hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio so let's take the pitch driver off this now this is this is really the key pitch driver and the voice designer are the two things that I really want to show you today because these are the keys to setting this whole thing up and making it interesting so we can zoom in a little bit more I must remember to zoom back out again this is the problem being live but there's pitch driver uh, pitch driver is exclusive to Nuendo you won't see it in Cubase and basically it's a very very clean way to detune a voice and it works really well on a spoken voice you can also add some spatial effects which is kind of a bit of widening and you can mix between the original and the treated so I'm just going to cycle around that I hope it doesn't get on your nerves let's just cycle around it hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio so first of all let's show you what it sounds like without anything hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio hello yeah so that was me saying hello hope you don't you know and what I was thinking of there originally was the voice of one of the minions from world of, uh, from Warcraft 3 I think it was quite a long time ago and I wanted to have like a you know a really gormless sounding person um, so that's why I did hello. that hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio that was the that was the intention oh quick interruption hello Bernice Bernice nice to have you with us um yeah so we'll by the way I am monitoring yeah let's quickly skip back to the camera get the cameras on yeah hello <laughs> I am monitoring the chat it's a little bit behind I'm a bit afraid to use the very low latency at the moment so we're keeping it on I think it's about a 20 second delay so feel free to pile some stuff up in the chat if you're just saying hello any questions try and if you can keep them relevant to this and of course I'm looking for stuff to do in the next live screen right let's move on so cameras off so that was the original voice hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio hello. and I wasn't really gonna do much with it but then it was a friend of mine who said well you know everybody does a stupid low voice like that why don't you make it a little bit more interesting so this is where pitch driver came in here we go hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio hello do you mind if I have a look around your studio okay that's enough of that so you get the idea because because I changed the pitch of my voice originally down to this and then putting it back up it gives it a whole different tone so that was the minion um, and that was pitch driver right so let's go back to the main screen again and move down to the next part I want to get through this quickly because we've got an hour or so and uh, I, obviously I don't want it to be boring for you but also I don't want to run out of time I want to get through every element as quickly as I can so let's go on to the newsreader so the newsreader was supposed to be slightly humorous and you know the script itself uh, which I have now closed so we'll have to get that back in a second uh, we'll get back to the script in a second what I wanted here was just you know somebody that sounds a little bit like a, a classic newsreader again it's not me it's not you know really my voice as such but there you go so. a statement has been released today by Saheb Anthony Didibinini Bibisa Prime Minister of Smegville Mr Didibinini Bibisa has warned all his loyal subjects that they should never under any circumstances type Google into Google as this may break the internet <laughs> so there's a couple of references to British uh, comedy there if anybody gets it uh, the first one was of course Smegville which is uh, from uh, one of my old favorite Red Dwarfs 
uh, it was a sci-fi series called Red Dwarf. And the second one, uh, typing Google into Google uh, from a, a great comedy series called The IT Crowd. If you haven't seen it, you must see it. It's extremely funny. So there you can see I've, I've done my, um, let's zoom, zoom back in. Yeah, I'll just make sure, I've got to make sure it's zoomed in. Okay, so I've, I've done my usual thing here. I've read through everything and then placed it, moved it around. Um, you know, I don't think we need to go into how everything was moved around, do we? Um, <clears throat> you know, that's just what you do. It's, it's a normal thing to do. So let's have another listen to that. A statement has been released today by Sahib Anthony Didibinini Bibisa, Prime Minister of Smegville. Mr Didibinini Bibisa has warned all his loyal subjects that they should never, under any circumstances, type Google into Google, as this may break the internet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, was that funny? I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So, and on the newsreader, what have we got there? Again, skip through these because this is not really Nuendo specific. Uh, so we've got the Apex Exciter, which I believe they do use or they used to use in a lot of the old uh, radio news stations. So the lovely Apex Exciter um, from Waves, which is an awesome little piece of kit. And then once again, a little bit of treatment from Butch Vig. It's compression, basically. All right, so let's move on. So we've got news. We've finished with the. Uh, we've finished with newsreader. Let's move on to the next part. To Google. Video uh, two. We're recording an advert for a new movie which is coming out next year. In a world where no one cares about other drivers, Smegville Studios presents. If you indicate, I will cut you off. All right. Starring. Let's go through that again. In a world where no one cares about other drivers, Smegville Studios presents If You Indicate, I Will Cut You Off. Starring Tom Bruise as Jack Lemon, the man who drives a smart car but thinks he is driving a bus. And introducing Jason Platum as an angry driver in a large 4x4 with big, flashy, overly bright headlights. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you've ever been to the bar, you'll understand um, yeah, the reference there. Now, that's something I want to quickly explain. So you'll notice that unlike a lot of videos that you see, I have my audio in parts or in containers, as we call them. I still call them parts back from the old days. And I like to do this because it just means that there's times when you can, for, in, for example, let's just have a quick look down here. We can open all of those parts at once. Oh, there's MIDI there, sorry. Yeah, let's, let's find something, uh, how about these? Yeah, okay, we're not gonna be, uh, all right, let's just randomly select three. You can see that you've kind of got a little mini editor there. So it's, it's kind of a, a quick way of being able to organize things and also a quick way of zooming in as well because you can set the whole thing to, you know, look however you want it to look and then go back to the main screen for the overview. So that's why I've got them in parts. I, I just find it, it's a, it's a nice way of working for me. Of course, you don't have to do that. The audio itself, the raw audio can be actually on the project window. And on top of that, we've still got the ability to double click those parts and then go into the actual audio editor where you've got all the audio facilities. All right, so let's move on, Hollywood. Let's hear him a little bit of him one more time. In a world where no one cares about other drivers, Smegville Studios presents If You Indicate, I Will Cut You Off. Right. So obviously, you could probably tell that that is me, but hopefully it's a little bit disguised. And apart from I've got a UAD uh, Voice of God here, which, again, it used to be 
often used, the original version of this used to be used in, in the radio um, to give you that, you know, the low bass end to your voice. But it's the voice designer that's, that's done this. So let's hear it without any of the treatment. I'll just disable that. In a world where no one cares about other drivers, Smegville Studios presents If You Indicate, I Will Cut You Off. One Starring more time. A world where no one cares about other drivers, Smegville Studios presents If You Indicate, I Will Cut You <clears throat> Off. Yeah, so that's basically just me talking like that. So. What I've done is I've added a little bit of EQ and compression and then the voice designer here I've taken the tuning the pitch down by 10 and also the formant so voice designer what I'm going to do is we'll skip through these as quickly as possible all the different voices and then I'm going to go back to my normal voice and um, show you exactly you know more stuff that we can actually do with voice designer right so that's that one one more time with Rose and without as jack lemon the man who drives a smart car but thinks he's driving a bus and introducing jason platum as now there's one thing i noticed there which again because there's music and so on playing behind it i noticed a little breath which i didn't like so let's just get in a world where no one cares about barring tom bruise as jack lemon the man you see that you see that uh, that bit of noise there and again could probably put a gate on this or something but yeah it's just as easy just to chop it out sometimes might be an idea to just pull that in and let's have a listen to that as jack lemon the man who drives a smart see how the end of that n jack lemon it became really obvious that it had been chopped, so I'm just going to pull it out and smooth it off a little bit more. As Jack Lemon, the man who drives us... Still a little bit more, maybe. Or maybe that's just the way it's going to be. Jack Lemon, the man yeah. who drives a smart car but thinks he's driving a bus. A lot better. Okay. So that was the, the deeper voice for the Hollywood movie. Let's move on to the next one which is the salesman or the kind of normal advert. Quick listen to him. Thinking of purchasing a new mobile telephone? It's two for the price of three, all week at Care 5. Sale starts on Sunday morning. Come on down on Sunday night and sleep over in our specially designed tents to avoid the rush. Grab the apple you always wanted at Care 5. Offer applies from 9 a.m. until 9.01 a.m. Items cannot be switched. No refunds or exchanges will be accepted. Actually, sounds a little bit, uh, a little bit, kind of low quality when you play it on its own. That one. one Thinking of purchasing a new mobile telephone? It's too. And of course, you can tell that's me. It's just me talking with a little bit more enthusiasm, which I sometimes do. Not that often, but you know, I did for this. So let's have a look at him. Again, a little bit of EQ and compression, and then the pitch driver. This time, so. What we've got really with the pitch driver is ability to change tuning. The, the spatial thing, I'm not so worried about. But the, the tuning, and it's quite smooth. I know there's one or two other plugins that do this, but to be honest, the pitch driver seems to be a lot smoother to me than, than all the others. So pitch driver is for pitch. Now you can do that as well in the um, voice designer, which is also native to Nuendo. Um, voice designer has a lot more features that's all so if it's just a basic pitch that you want then pitch driver will do the job so let's hear that without one more time here we go thinking of purchasing a new mobile telephone it's two for the price of three all week at care five sale starts on sunday morning come on down on sunday night and sleep over in our specially designed tents to avoid the rush all right so very small amount of pitch change there the whole thing with this was the eq so again what i've done is taken you can see on here there's some mid dip there's some low cut various little things done so moving on moving on um 
Grab the apple you always wanted at Care 5. Offer applies from 9am until 9.01am. Items cannot be switched. No refunds or exchanges will be accepted. Okay, so that little bit at the end... Offer applies from 9am until 9.01am. Items cannot be switched. No refunds or exchanges will be accepted. Yeah, again, sounds a little bit gurgly like this. Um, probably I've done it a bit over the top. Um, so here's a feature that you might not be aware of. Maybe you are. Uh, we can drop this down to sizing applies time stretch. So instead of moving, just moving the border of the part, we can actually tell it to apply a time stretch for a certain period. And let's just I'll quickly show you that. So we'll make it even more fast than it already was. Offer applies from 9 a.m. until 9.01 a.m. Items cannot be switched. No refunds or exchanges will be accepted. Yeah. So... Again, just playing around really here, but this can be really useful in a more critical situation. If you want, like, let's say, for example, you've got a voice and everything's finished and you want to fit that voice, which is at the moment, you know, a certain length. Let's say it's 10 seconds and it needs to be nine seconds. You can just use that little bit there to pull it into the time. And it's actually quite seamless. This is over the top. That's why it sounds a little bit treated. Offer applies from 9 a.m. until 9.01 a.m. Items cannot be switched. No refunds or exchanges will be accepted. But subtleties, if you do it subtly, it, it works really well. OK, let's move on. So here we are into the obligatory Scotsman. What are you doing? I'm trying to record a scientific show in here. It's taken me all week to get the whiskey bottles lined up correctly. And now you've got to spoil it all. All right, so... One more time. What do you think you're doing? I'm trying to record a scientific show in here. It's taken. Now you can see I've done some editing there to let's just put that back to normal. Uh, some editing to to get rid of the pauses in my speaking, <laughs> and to make the whole thing a little bit more urgent. And once again, a little bit of EQ and the old pitch driver. So let's just hear it without pitch driver. What do you think you're doing? I'm trying to record a scientific show in here. It's taken me all week to get the whiskey bottles lined up correctly. And now you've got to spoil it all. Right, let's get rid of that little bit of noise there. Yeah, so that's me doing my best attempt at a Scottish accent. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's it. One more time. And now you've got to spoil it all. Yeah. And now you've got to spoil You know, it's just a case of putting on the voices. And th this is the thing, I'm not a voice actor, okay? Now, I've had some really good comments about this, um, this voice reel. And I know there's people out there that could do it better. And to be honest, if somebody had directed me instead of me doing it all on my own, I'm sure mine could have ended up better. Oh, you know, that bit didn't sound very convincing and so on and so forth. The point is, with the tools you've got available, you can make something that's potentially boring sound a lot more interesting and it, and it does get you work as well that's the other thing um okay let's uh let's have a quick look at a couple of the questions here uh do you use local eq on those vox maybe 100 hertz off for this project no need and felipe this new endo is fantastic i only have krubus pro 11 i can see some of that plugins are not available yet yeah, that's the point really uh felipe is i hope i'm pronouncing your name um correctly there um yeah the whole point really i mean i i started off on cubase and i'm a composer originally so you know, um, my area of expertise moved from Cubase to Nuendo and still in Cubase. But there are plugins, there are native things that, that happen in Nuendo and a lot of other more complex things, which we'll hopefully get to later, uh, the game audio and all that stuff, um, that do give Nuendo that notch above, you know. And it can, of course, do everything that, um, that Cubase can do as well. Um, regarding the, the cut of the vocal, or of the voice, should I say. Well, okay, there's a little bit going on here, but not a lot, because in this particular case, I wanted to hear all those, you know, impurities, and I didn't want it to be too perfect, because otherwise, you know, how are you going to reproduce that? 
Um, but there are some things which I will get to when we get to the mix part. I hope you don't mind sticking around uh, for that. Uh, so I don't want to kind of break off and go into the mixing yet. So we're nearly at the end. So let's just get to what the... What do you think you're doing? I'm trying to record a scientific show in here. It's taken me all week to get the whiskey bottles lined up correctly. And now you've gone and spoiled it all. So there you go. That's that's me. Oh, I keep doing that. I keep... Yeah. The whiskey here. Scientific show in here. It's taken me all week to get the whiskey bottles lined up correctly. And now you've gone and spoiled it all. So it's just basically, once again, it's pitch driver. I know I could just put these plugins always on top so that every time I click things they don't disappear. Um, but basically, it's detuned by eight. So here we go. Let's have a listen to him. What are you doing? I'm trying to record a scientific show in here. It's taken me all week to get the whiskey bottles lined up correctly. And now you've gone and spoiled it all. That sounds quite convincing to me. I mean, I, again, I've played this to a few people that I know as well, and, you know, quite a, quite a number of them didn't actually believe it was me. Um, not that that's entirely the point, of course, because it's not all about, you know, what you can do with your own voice, but these are things that you can do with other people's voices as well. And we'll get to the design and how it was all put together soon. I'm quickly trying to get through these different voices. So we've got the posh guy. Here, let's have a listen to him. Oh, uh, yes, of course. I was just looking through some pictures of my new Porsche. Would you like to see them? Here's my favourite. You can see it is in apple green and features a pink. Okay, so that's the posh guy. And uh, listen to that without any effect. My new Porsche. Would you like to see them? Here's my favourite. You can see it is in apple green and features a painting of my face on each door. I simply love it. Now, you can hear there, funnily enough, uh, Philippe, you can hear there that there is definitely low cut done on the voice. And once again, I don't want to go into huge detail on this because that's been done here. But you can see there, look, there's, there's uh, I think, 500 hertz. To be honest, normally with low cut, Oh, and, and on the EQ there, you see? Okay, so, you know, and that's how I would usually do it. Or if I have, you know, a little bit more time, I would kind of roll it off like that. Certainly with vocals uh, as well. But there's a little bit more to that. And uh, like I said, I'll get back to it. So here we got the posh guy. It's basically just me talking in a posh accent. Oh, yes, of course. I was just looking through some pictures of my new Porsche. Would you like to see them? Here's my favourite. And the pitch change brings it to this. I was just looking through some pictures of my new Porsche. Would you like to see them? Here's my favourite. You can see it is in apple green and features a painting of my face on each door. I simply love it. <laughs> yeah, OK. So that's the posh guy. I kind of wish that I didn't do that one because I didn't like it. But at the end of the day, it was done. Right, so here we are. This is um, where, where things start to get interesting. So I've got the Dark Lord. Let's play this whole section and then break it down quickly. This is a restricted area. Kill them all. Yes, sir. All except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. Well, your reverence, that's really wonderful to hear. Really, really wonderful. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Thank you so much, your reverence. On second thoughts, kill him too. Oh, blast him. <laughs> right. Okay, I... Okay, so the troopers, well, that's got the robot effect on. I think we'll skip that because I'm going to show you a bit more of that in a while. But the Dark Lord, that, that was really the one that kind of got everybody's attention here. So I'm just going to play you that again. All except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. All right. Again, a little bit of noise there, which I should have cut off. Not super important. And that is done with the voice designer. So quickly... Have a listen. Let's keep that always on top. Quickly have a listen with nothing. Here we are. All except.
except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. So yeah, that was me kind of leaning into the mic, all except the gardener, and just speaking like that about New Endo. And we can all do that kind of voice, can't we? You know, it's just you're just kind of making your throat a little bit husky and and having fun um, and pretending that you've got a you know a, a, a cape on. <laughs> um, but yeah, 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 yeah. No, it wasn't that funny. Uh, uh, just you know, pretending that you're the Dark Lord from Star Wars. Uh, but again. Once you add some effects to that, I, I, you know, have a listen once again. All except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. So that was the basic effect of voice designer there. Again, didn't want to go too far with it. Um, in fact, originally I used pitch driver. Uh, and the other thing here is a little bit of EQ again, compression, etc., etc., from Butch Vic. Uh, but that was before the voice designer this time, instead of afterwards. So, shall we have a play with voice designer now? <laughs> I'm just reading the stream elements auto stuff that's flying up on the chat there. Yeah, maybe I should turn that off for next time. Um, okay, so. Yeah, so let, let actually no, we'll we'll move on. We'll move on. So what we've got there is we've got the detuning. All except the gardener. All except the gardener. So that's he... that's how it was, and here's how it is. All except the gardener. We've got the foreman, which changes the kind of character. Um, in case, in case you don't know. Um, what formants are, how it works with formants. Let's try and think of it an easy way to describe that. Um, you imagine you recorded your voice and you speed it up, double the speed. Apart from your actual pitch changing up, then the formant will also change up. So that the idea is that you can change, if you change your pitch upwards, we keep the formant the same, then the general tone of your voice, but not the pitch, will stay the same. Um, and you can now, of course, with modern technology, you can now adjust the foreman, i.e. the tone, without adjusting the pitch and so on. And it's a big subject, that's a subject for another thing. Um, but used a lot in music as well. Um, you can now, you know, as you, I'm sure you guys are well aware, you can speed up a music and not change the pitch, which is a kind of a similar thing. Not exactly the same. But let's move on. So, all except the gardener. So let's just show you what happens if we move the formant down along with the detune to match the detune. All except the gardener. You see how it how it sounds now, like it's been slowed down. All except the gardener. That to me sounds like you know I've spoken like this, and then somebody slowed it down. Whereas if you keep the foreman, you know, roughly around where it was. All except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. So what happens is you get that reduction in, in pitch, but you still have kind of an understandable foreman. So it doesn't sound too fake, even though it is obviously fake. Uh, the other thing I've done here is increase the spatial um, button or knob uh, so we've got except the gardener he is very important to me and i like his beard see if i move that to the center you'll hear all except the gardener he is very important to me you won't I... you won't hear much from that because i've got the actual um the actual voice not panned wide you know uh, I've also got a little bit of the original uh, dry voice in there and a little bit of generator and a little bit, obviously, of the wet voice, which is the treated voice. So once again, quick listen. All except the gardener. He is very important to me and I like his beard. So you can actually layer both of them if you want to and you hear that effect quite a lot. All except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. And so on. 
so yeah uh, what else? I think I've got a little bit of morph on here as well. So what the morph does, obviously, it, it morphs. Oh, I accept the gardener. You can, he is... you can generate this kind of noisy hiss, and a little bit of that can add a real nice edge. Oh, I accept the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. So, right, that's... I think that's enough on that one. So we'll move on. Uh, what else have we got here? Okay, yeah, the robotic troopers. Quick listen to those. This is a restricted area. All right. Again, not much to say on that. That's basically the robotic effect. This is a restricted area. And you can also, with the robotic effect, you can also move this to whisper, which is actually really nice. This is a restricted area. Have another listen to that. This is a restricted area. You can do some really strange things with that. Um, the wet control I've got here moved in on the EQ a little bit so that it's not, you know, too, too uh, sort of chesty. It needed to be needed to be robotic and of course detuned as well. So let's not dwell on that one. We'll come back to uh, the Dark Lloyd, <laughs> Dark Lloyd. Dark Lord a little bit later on. Right, so moving on, I think we've got Gardner here. Oh, your weapons. That's really wonderful to hear. Really, really wonderful. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Thank you. So, again, a little bit of EQ and pitch driver. And without, this is me. Bill, your weapons. That's really wonderful to hear. Really, really wonderful. I feel absolutely... And that, again, <laughs> I, I guess I should explain, that goes back to um, the days of a, a show on Saturday mornings in, in England called Tis Was, and it was uh, Chris Tarrant and Lenny Henry. And uh, Lenny Henry used to do an impression of David Bellamy. And he, and he speaks with the uh, the impediment of not being able to say R and he says W's instead. So this is me doing my best David Bellamy impression. David Bellamy Bill, was a weapon. gardener, by the way. Weapons. That's really wonderful to hear. Really, really wonderful. I feel absolutely wapsodic about that. And all I've done there is increase the pitch a little bit. Right, so we are up to the telephone. We're nearly there. So the little telephone conversation at the end. Let's have a quick one, quick listen to that. Uh, there we are. Hello, Tracy. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. <laughs> now, I found that quite funny. And the, the thing here was originally I actually did the voice um, like this. Have a quick word with Tracy. Just give me one minute. Hello, Tracy? Yes? Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. Yes, I'll take care of that. Thank you. Bye. Right, well... So, uh, originally I'd basically done the voice as a normal voice. I wanted to try and get it to sound female. Um, I don't know whether I succeeded with that, to be honest. But... Uh, Again, hearing it without the voice designer, it's just me talking in falsetto. Hello, yes, this is Tracy. Hello, Tracy. Yes. Yes, Sound like it sounds like the spam, spam, spam from Monty Python or something. Yes, I'll take care of that. Thank you. Bye. But, of course, with a little bit of creative sound treatment, so what we've done here, 100% wet, we've got the EQ, uh, hopefully I've still got, yeah, we're still zoomed in, you can see this, I've got the EQ right up here, so there's not much bottom or top end, so it's very telephonic. Pre preserve the formant, I've actually pitched up and pitched the formant up because I wanted to try and make my voice sound female rather than just higher. 
I hope that makes sense. Hey, Buzz. Thanks. Yes, I'll take care of that. Thank you. Bye. It's not bad. It's not bad. But last minute, I, I came across this little phone voice and I thought this is much more funny. You know, we've all heard that before. So I think we're almost there. I think we're almost there on the voices. And then we've got uh, 15, 20 minutes or so to go through the actual setup and the mix. Uh, let's just check till the end. I hope you enjoyed this little tour. Yeah. Did interest you? Um, well, I, um, I just wanted to use the toilet. Yeah, OK. So that was all the voices. Now, the first thing I did, obviously, was record each individual part, chop them up, put them together. Now, if I can just quickly get my script back. And there it is. You can see that there were some other things that I'd already kind of thought about here, which was obviously doors opening and closing, footsteps and so on. And just to create a little bit of atmosphere. That, that was the idea. Excuse me, I'll just have a drink. Um, the music as well, of course, was, was an integral part. I found some music, various bits of music that I'd had, that I'd done, you know, over the last couple of years uh, that haven't been used for anything. Um, so, yeah, you can see here on the, on the script on the side, door open closes, steps, door opens, etc. So first of all, we've got the doors. In fact, no, maybe we should go to the steps first because the steps are, uh, there's a section with steps. So I didn't want any of the actual characters to be moving around. Um, let's zoom in again. Only me and the guy who turned up at the doorstep and, you know, was, was giving, was getting a tour of the studio, as it were. So this is the footsteps. I hope this is all clear. So basically, you've got me on the right, which is where my voice is, and the minion guy on the left, which is where his voice is. And let's reactivate the track here so you can see what I've done. Uh, just wait for that to reactivate. Hopefully, yep, yeah, there it is. So this was done using Walker, which I've explained before. Great little tool for, um, oh, it's muted, that's why it's not playing. Great little tool for doing footsteps. There's lots of different choices. And what you do is you play it in uh, with MIDI. And there's the MIDI there. And you can kind of move the notes around. You know, it's quite intuitive, basically. It's, it's, I think there's another, uh, there's another one that people use, but this is the one I use. Lots of different options there, different shoes, different surfaces, and so on. Um, so at the beginning, I wanted the guy to sound like he was outside, so we've got this little squelchy kind of thing. Oops, sorry, it's muted. Let's try that again. And in fact, you can't see that because uh, it's not in the center of the screen. Anyway, quick listen. So that was him arriving, um, and there's some atmos that goes with that. So let's go back to where we were. And just a quick listen to the steps. So you've got him on the left, me on the right. Once I've finished with the um, MIDI side of the footsteps, because this is kind of a basically an audio project, I don't want to have any MIDI stuff lying around. So what I would do then is I've got my, um, here we are, render selection set up to render each of the MIDI parts, again, we'll zoom in into audio uh, to transfer all the channel settings and to um, give each, you know, each of a separate as a separate event and to mute the original. So, and then you just click render or you can have a shortcut for it. 
So we can now just re-mute the actual instrument. There you go. Right. So here's the footsteps once again. I hope that's clear. Maybe I should turn them up a little bit. So you can clearly hear that there's a difference between him and me. He, he's, he, he's a faster steps. And mine are slower. But they're both quite back in the mix because, again, you don't want them to take over. But it's just one of those little subtleties that uh, make things nice. So let's move down to the door. The doors. That's the footsteps done. So the doors and the doorbell. Again, these are all sounds that were brought in from Soundly and from the Nuendo uh, built-in collection. There's a little section here, look. <laughs> the sheep. I always found those, those, the sheep quite interesting. A little bit more of that. That's moving into the next room. So one thing about doors. Um, again, this is a, a bit of a fun project, right? I'm sure you're aware of that. And, and it, it's, it's holiday time, you know, so the idea here was to have a bit of fun and not be too serious. Um, but let's obviously interject some serious points. So one thing about doors. All right. So we're not looking at a film here. We're looking, we're listening only. There's nothing, nothing to look at. So in a film, you would obviously try and match the sound of the door to what it is that you're looking at. If it's a wooden door, you'll try and match it. You'll try and you know, find a wooden door sound, even the weight of the wood and so on. Um, but in this, I wanted it to be a little bit more like th this one here. Obviously, it's a little bit over the top, but that's because it's leading into the sci-fi room. Um, but yeah, my point being with doors, again, probably preaching to the wise here who already know, but make sure they match. That, that's the thing. If you've got a door opening and you've got a door closing, they need to sound like they're the same door because quite often you'll hear, oh, well, I've found a door sample and it's opening and then I've found a different one that's closing and they don't sound like the same door. So something to watch out for anyway. Right, so that's doors. Uh, we've got some lightsabers. Uh, I don't need that. All right, so lightsabers, here we are. And these were various sound effects that I found around. I thought they were quite funny. In fact, I think it might have been finding that actual effect that led me to, to do the Dark Lord voice. Um, and then there's the telephone here. Again. Can we see that? Let's make sure we've got it. And again, this is why I like to have these audio parts in parts. You see, I haven't done that there. Let's go to key command and we'll put that together. So now I've got that there and I can really look at it in fine detail, as can you. So picking up the telephone, dialing the three numbers, and then the answer. That's the one ring. And then I think we have over here. Yeah, then we've got uh, Tracy's voice. Hello, yes, this is Tracy. No, not that one, that one. <laughs> yep, okay, so that's the phone. Again, pretty obvious, but the beauty here is to be being able to move these things around so that they just sound, you know, in they sound realistic to a degree. Um, it's it's a bit of a challenge doing it this way when there's no picture to follow because normally you know you'd have somebody actually pressing the keys and you can you know move uh, move the whole thing to where the 
where the action is taking place. So then we've got one more bit of phone at the end, which was uh, putting the phone down. And then there is the final... Uh, I, I thought this would be kind of relatively amusing um, that at the end where the guy says, I just wanted to use the toilet, there's a short pause and then he gets punched, falls on the floor and then the door slams behind him kind of thing. Now, that's not great, but it finishes the thing off rather than, I don't know, you have to tell me maybe, you know, in the comments if anybody's... Uh, still there would it have been better to just finish it with um use the toilet with that line you know I, um i just wanted to use the toilet so maybe it would have who knows so finally before we move back to voice designer finally a little bit of atmosphere so we'll close up the steps we'll close up the effects, I don't think I've missed anything there. The blasters, the telephone, the punch, the sheep, of course, which I also thought was quite funny that one of the sheep escaped. I don't know if you spotted that. Yeah. Where, where is it? Where are the sheep? Uh, here we are, yeah, at the end of the sheep. Uh. So that was that. So we can close that folder up. Music um, goes without saying, really. That was just some music that I had lying around. Uh, Spitfire Albion, I think, was the, the uh, orchestral piece. This one. Tom Bruce as Jack Lemon. Yeah, that was when I first done when I first got Spitfire Albion, and it was it really inspired me to do a lot of orchestral work. And the other thing was for some showreel stuff. Right. So we've finished with all those. Um, the only thing left is the atmosphere. So you probably noticed, let's just solo the atmospheres off, put you back into the full view again. And again, these are things that really bring things to life, in my opinion. So you can hear outside, as soon as the whole thing starts, you can hear Just, just that little bit there of the fading in of the wind noise and, and actually this, this other um, noise here, which I've got very, very down in the mix. And listen to this. There's actually ducks and all sorts of strange things going on there. So I thought that was nice. Hello, can I help you? Hello. And then once the guy comes inside, we wanted to move onto like a, a studio atmosphere. Problem? Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. So when you first heard this, you might have thought, oh, that's odd, there's a bit of background noise going on. Well, the point there was in the corridors of the studio, I wanted a little bit of studio background noise. And that's that. And it disappears as soon as the door opens into the, you know, the next room. So if we find the doors again... I've closed all the folders down now. There we are, doors. Yeah. So at the end of this, you see as soon as that door moves position, it stops. Same thing applies over here. And I only used the one part of the ambience here, this one. As soon as the door closes, the ambience is gone because you're actually in the studio there listening to the person. And obviously it's a studio, so there shouldn't be any noise in it. Same there. And then here we have... 
There it comes. And there you get it. And the final one would be the sci-fi. Let's just make sure, yeah, you can see that. I think that's here. Yeah. So have a listen here. So that was the, here's the entrance. Sci-fi room. It comes down for while the gardener's speaking, because I kind of presumed that he was off to one side somewhere. And then... Yeah, we go back to the studio again. So, all right, so you've seen every single part of this in fine detail now. So what we'll do now is just quickly look at the mix itself. And there's not much really to explain here. I've used an item of um, an instance of reverence, which is kind of a roomy reverb. Maybe uh, it doesn't, don't use it, not a lot. This is a restricted area. Kill them all. If I turn it up, you can hear. If I turn the reverb up, you can hear that it's what it's doing maybe. Uh, maybe I shall increase the sends. Let's go to sends here. Oh, that's strange. The sends have disappeared. There they are. Bottom. Okay. So we'll find something that uses uh, the sends. Yeah, there's a. This is a restricted area. Kill them all. Yes, sir. All except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. So yeah, the, the whole point there was a little bit of kind of roomy sound, but not much because I still wanted the emphasis to be... Um, oh, thanks, Felipe. I've just seen your, your message there. Yeah, we've not got a lot of people with us today, which is not surprising. It's holiday time. Uh, but of course, the stream will be kind of chopped down all, and, and uh, it will stay up on the channel once it's done. Uh, yeah, Felipe, thank you. Nice transitions between the vocals. I've got another thing to show you about the vocals. We'll get there in a sec. We're nearly done here. So, all right, so a little bit okay, of... thanks, Jeremy. My voice... Okay, thanks, Jeremy. ...is absolutely yes, dry. Thanks, Jeremy. Now, again, if you wanted to make this into a radio play or, you know, you would probably have a little bit more ambience on the voice on all the voices and you'll have them moving around and moving in and out of the camera um, and the mic. But don't forget this was supposed to be a voice demo, so. Um, okay, thanks, Jeremy. Here's Studio 6. I'm not actually sure what's going on here today. This is a restricted area. Kill them all. So let's have a look quickly, a little bit of automation on the sci-fi room, uh, if I can find that. There it is, should be able to, yeah. So can you, let's zoom right in. And hope you can see that. I can make it bigger, can I? There we are. This is the uh, only issue with doing these things uh, as a live stream, obviously, is we can't do any post-production on the zooming in and out of all the important parts. So it's all, uh, it's manual. Um, so yeah, the automation written on the basic main fader of that sci-fi room. And as you can hear, what I did is just went along with it, grabbed the fader. And so on. Now you hear all those little peaks in the in the volume there. They were kind of invisible when we had the whole thing running together. Have a listen. Six. I'm not actually sure what's going on here today. This is a restricted area. Kill them all. Yes, sir. All except the gardener. Maybe that he one. Is very important to me, and 
I like his beard. Will. Yeah, maybe maybe that that big one there was was kind of obvious. Not that it matters at all, but the point being is I kind of just move the fader up and down with right automation on, um, in case you don't know how to do that. Uh, let's quickly go back to the main camera. And uh, you'll see down here on the, you'll see the little buttons on the desk, on the mixer. There's a few ways to do it, obviously, but on the main channel, you just simply hit the W right button. And then you can move your fader around and it'll record what you write and then turn right off. Go back to the green button, which is read. Oh, it's also here, look. Um, and if we move over, you'll see the right button there. There's a number of ways to do that. And there's also a number of other features that we can do with automation uh, in a more advanced way, which we'll get to again in, in, a, in another video, maybe the next one, in fact. Uh, so that'll be something that would be quite interesting. So there you go, automation, automation on the volume, which is obvious stuff. And then I think here at the beginning, where his footsteps are, you'll see if you listen to him on his own, just walking in uh, outside. Let's have a turn that one up and have a listen. So basically, the automation on there is the standard. Actually, I've got the standard pan, uh, the uh, standard panner on there. So what he's doing is he's coming in from one side and moving to the center. And that was just done by dragging the panner across a couple of times till I felt it was right. Turning automation off. And that's what you end up with. So there you go. Right, so we're nearly there. What we're going to do now is a quick look at the final kind of output. Interesting thing here is supervision so this again at the moment is as far as i know i'm pretty sure it's uh, exclusive to nuendo and there's also i should point out this is for felipe here i've got actually i've actually got um this waves gw on here the greg wells mixcentric Again, this is something that can be done uh, with Steinberg plugins, but I just happen to have this one ping, you know, and all it does is adds a little bit of compression and it takes, again, rolls off a little bit of bottom end, um, which, you know, Felipe observed earlier on. So, supervision. This is going to be a whole other video all about supervision, to be honest. But what I wanted to show you was this little section down here. We can zoom in even further. Let's see if this works. Yeah. So there we are. Uh, the intelligibility meter. So let's play some of the voice. Into Google, as this may break the internet. Oh, that was interesting. So you can see it's telling me that my voice is quite intelligible there. That means that it can be understood. Now, if we move over. Other drivers, Smegville Studios presents. If you indicate, I will cut you off. That's not bad. Now, the thing here is I've got it over the entire mix as well. So it's kind of showing us how intelligible the voices would be in a real world situation. Um, I'm not sure about all the different languages that this would work with. Um, sorry about that. Let's move on to Studio 5. We'll have to try that. And if anybody wants to either send us any suggestions, let's have a listen to the Dark Lord and see whether he's intelligible or not. All except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. Will, you weapons. That's really wonderful to hear. Really, really wonderful. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Thank you. Now, that's interesting because I did have somebody tell me that the guy with, you know, the, the gardener guy um, was a little bit difficult to understand. Um, and the intelligibility uh, meter seems to be kind of agreeing with that. Right. 
So I'd, I'd use that as a basic guide. Obviously, you're going to use your ears, and the other thing you're going to do is you're going to get people to... <laughs> not, not that intelligible, I guess. Yeah, well, that's just me. You know, it depends as well whether I'm uh, eating a piece of cheese or something at the same time. So let's, uh, let's just go one last thing before we move on to something slightly different. We'll just find, let's find a nice long section of my normal voice, which obviously is, and we'll just quickly run around what you can do with, with the uh, voice designer. So there's the voice. Hello, Tracy. Please can you take a note not to allow... So this is going to probably drive everybody a little bit mad. Um, but of course, those of you not listening live, the perseverance of Felipe Oliveira. Oliveira. Yes, I think I've got the, that right. Um, but those of you that are not listening live, you'll be able to skip through this once it starts to uh, drive you mad. So let's pull in a version of voice designer over my normal voice and just quickly run through some of the features. Hello, Tracy. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future. Right, so using death, death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. There Thanks. We are. Okay. So first of all, right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little tour. Let's just set everything back to normal. There's the dry voice. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. So we're, Thanks. Take we're, fully, we're fully processing now. So first thing we'll do is have a look at robots. So what does a robot do? It's fixing the pitch, basically. It's like, a, like an old style vocoder. -y. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. Take and what you, what you can do with robot is you can switch between the robot, which is the, you know, the fixed tone, and you can also pick, uh, move towards the whisper. You can also change the pitch, obviously. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams. Yeah, so if your song, you know, if or if there was some music that happened to be, let's say, an E, um, I think I've got that. I can't. I've not got perfect pitch, but I can usually tell what an E is because I'm a guitar player. Take a note not to allow I think any that's around an e. or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note. <laughs> that's actually really quite cool. And bear in mind that this is my standard voice. This is not this is not any, you know, not me putting on any accent or anything. So we'll put that back and just listen to what happens when we move between robot and whisper. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Nice. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially so using... Let's, let's have a listen to the delay and feedback. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in the future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. I'm pretty sure that's going to be unintelligible. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing. <laughs> Problematic. There's supervision. Now that reminds me, that effect reminds me a lot of um, the effects that was used on one of the voices in. The Hitchhiker's Guide, the, the remake with with uh, Stephen Fry. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Yeah, you can go pretty extreme with that. Uh, but let's uh, let's move on. Morph. 
Neighbors, thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, <laughs> especially using death rays, laser or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note. I honestly can't tell you exactly what that's doing, but it's certainly doing something. Gardeners in future, especially I just realised, by the way, I think we have uh, or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Right. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams. This the spatial element we won't hear much of at the moment because uh, the, the actual panning is quite central. Um, there is a button here to preserve formant, which funnily enough I completely missed um, explaining about earlier on, and that will do exactly what I was talking about earlier. So if I just uh, change the pitch on the voice, Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, Obviously. especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. So that's trying to keep the form of my voice so it still sounds like me. Now, the only thing we've got left here... Uh, da, 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 da. There we are. The morph button, isn't it? So, one more time. <laughs> Gardeners in future. Death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing so of gardeners in future. We might be able to get a Dalek kind of, so we're modulating this, this uh, signal with, with the waves here. Let's have a listen in future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams, or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any You get the idea. I don't know what uh, what you would use that for. Maybe maybe someone else has, uh, has, a, has a more useful uh, use for that one. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go, that, that's basically voice designer and that was the, the key to this whole thing. Um, there was a little bit of trickery obviously and quite a lot of editing and quite a lot of playing around and you know and obviously swallowing pride because I know that I'm not the best um, voice actor um, but without without any you know direction uh sometimes a little bit tricky not making excuses though because it's not inherently my trade right so i think we're about there i had a question earlier on about the um the voices how were they actually recorded what microphone uh, do i use and so on so i would just quickly um i'm going to put the camera on here while i just quickly load up i have another project if I can find it, you can just watch me panic for a second. Uh, I think that'll do. That would do it. Yeah. So we'll come back into the voice project in a second, and I'm just going to quickly show you this. How are the voices recorded? So uh, there we are. Or you go back to the main screen. So it's all there. Okay, so you can see uh, behind me here, my uh, trusty microphone, the Townsend Sphere. And Townsend Sphere's beautiful mic, um, basically it has two capsules, front and back or left and right, depending on how you want to use it. And it records a signal from the front and the back, and you can then treat it and emulate other microphones with it. Um, a bit like a kind of cut down version of the old Calric sound field that kind of thing not quite as kind of advanced as that where you can home in on certain areas of the room so i'll just quickly show you um, how that works so we go back here so here's a voice hopefully this will work 
Dubai has carved out a permanent place on the world map as an investment hub. And this week, the Emirate finds itself at the heart of the real estate industry. So we're not interested in all the how that was done. And, and, and you know, it's the same old thing, really. There's some pitch driver. There's uh, the voice of God. There is probably some roll off at the bottom. But uh, the Townsend Sphere itself. So once you've got the signal, if you play back without the plugin. Permanent place on the world map as an investment hub. And this week, the Emirate finds Actually, itself have to turn it off. I the think. real estate industry. In fact, As the no, we have to we have to remove it. I believe. Yeah. Global meeting place for the Middle East and North Africa regions investors. We offer a platform that showcases the best that the industry. So you can see on the signal here. Again, this video is not about the Townsend Sphere, I know, but this is just one of those beautiful additional tools that go along with the new endo in a really nice way. So you can see the left signal there and the right signal are slightly different. The left signal is the front of the microphone and the right signal is the rear of the microphone. So... The permanent place on the world map as an investment hub. And this week, the Emirate finds itself at the heart of the real estate industry. As the global meeting so place we'll put the, the sphere back in North Africa we offer a platform that showcases the best that the industry has to offer from projects that push the boundaries of the sector to launches that redefine the industry and then we can all while you choose through state professional various investors under one roof styles of microphone Dubai has carved out a permanent place on the world map as an investment hub and to answer what Philippe was uh, talking about earlier on, um, about the, the cut-off at the bottom end and so on, which of course is a standard thing, but then some of these old classic mics actually have that. And here we have a, a great example, for, for example, the LD87 here, which is uh, the old Nyman, I believe. And there's a filter there which will cut off. Um, I'm not sure of the frequency, to be honest. I have to quickly look in the manual. Uh, you can also change the pattern, you can see. Uh, let's go zoom in again, I'm sorry. I need to be able to see this a bit clearer. Yeah, you can change the pattern and you can change the actual filter. These these knobs are based around um, what was on the original uh, microphone, the ones that have highlights here. So there, like there were the on the original, for example. Um, there's lots of options and if you haven't had a chance to play with the Townsend Sphere, or are not aware of it, it's well worth checking out. It's basically every microphone built in to one microphone. Um, and I, I had most of these, um, the Neumanns back in the day, and I can barely tell the difference, to be honest. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how the voices were recorded. And um, I think we're almost there because uh, I don't want to uh, don't want to go over time here uh, so what we do is we'll switch back to the main uh, showreel make sure it's active And there we are. So yeah, I think uh, I think we're about there. So I think we'll go back to camera. Um, I hope I hope that was relatively interesting. I know I went into probably a little bit more detail than I needed to on some of those um, pieces. Um, but to be honest, you know, you saw that the whole thing, how how it was put together. You've seen it in detail now, and just that one plugin. The, um, the pitch driver and, to be honest, um, the voice designer. I'm saying one plug-in, but really the voice designer could have done all the things that the pitch driver does. Uh, but just that one plug-in kind of really helped to bring that little script um, to life. Now, if anybody's got any questions about it, if anybody's got any ideas or suggestions for future videos on Uendo, if you think that this was a bit boring or if you think that it was not in enough detail, if there's anything I've missed, you know the routine. Just uh, let me know 
and of course we'll, we'll do pick it up on the next one um, it's been an absolute pleasure as usual I think we've had you know a few people watching which is nice and a real big thanks to those of you who stayed around and uh, said hello in the comments and so on unfortunately the comments will disappear once I edit out the first 10 minutes of the video but uh, that's it for now I'm going to play out with the actual script one more time um, from start to finish while we uh, say goodbye thanks ever so much folks and uh, super mega large see you next time Hello. Do you mind if I have a look around your studio? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Okay. So yeah, I should also point out that what I'm going to do um, is export this shortly, do a, you know, a little bit of treatment, uh, final mastering, and I will also post it up um, on the channel just in case anybody's interested. All right, let's go. See okay. you soon. Cheers. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. And now the news. A statement has been released today by Sahib Anthony Didibinini Bibisa, Prime Minister of Smegville. Mr. Didibinini Bibisa has warned all his loyal subjects that they should never, under any circumstances, type Google into Google, as this may break the internet. Oh, that was interesting. Here in Studio 2, we're recording an advert for a new movie which is coming out next year. In a world where no one cares about other drivers, Smegville Studios presents... If you indicate, I will cut you off. Starring Tom Bruce as Jack Lemon, the man who drives a smart car but thinks he's driving a bus. And introducing Jason Platon as an angry driver in a large 4x4 with big, flashy, overly bright headlights. Sounds like a great movie. In Studio 3, we're recording a television advert. Thinking of purchasing a new mobile telephone? It's two for the price of three, all week at Care 5. Sale starts on Sunday morning. Come on down on Sunday night and sleep over in our specially designed tents to avoid the rush. Grab the apple you always wanted at Care 5. Offer applies from 9 a.m. until 9.01 a.m. Items cannot be switched. No refunds or exchanges will be accepted. Um, okay, great. Let's have a quick look in Studio 4. What do you think you're doing? I'm trying to record a scientific show in here. It's taken me all week to get the whiskey bottles lined up correctly. And now you've gone and spoiled it all. Um, sorry about that. Let's move on to Studio 5. Okay. Hi, Jeremy. I'm just showing this strange-looking gentleman around the studio. Can we come in? Oh, uh, yes, of course. I was just looking through some pictures of my new Porsche. Would you like to see them? Um... Here's my favourite. You can see it is in apple green and features a painting of my face on each door. I simply love it. Um, okay, thanks, Jeremy. Here's Studio 6. I'm not actually sure what's going on here today. This is a restricted area. Kill them all. Yes, sir. All except the gardener. He is very important to me, and I like his beard. Well, your weapons, that's really wonderful to hear. Really, really wonderful. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Thank you so much, your weapons. On second thoughts, kill him too. What? Okay, I think we should leave that there. I had no idea they were in. If you don't mind, I'm just going to have a quick word with Tracy. Just give me one minute. Hello, Tracy? Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. Take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future, especially using death rays, laser beams or lightsabers. Thanks. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed this little tour. Did you see anything that might interest you? Um, well, I, um, I just wanted to use the toilet.
<laughs> okay, folks, uh, that's about it then. Uh, that'll do for now. Uh, thanks ever so much for joining us and uh, have a great evening, day, whatever it is, and uh, a very happy new year in advance. See you next month. Thanks a lot. <laughs>